<laughs> thank you. Well, good afternoon, uh, and thank you all for coming. I am excited to present my second annual State of the University Address, a review of some of the highlights from the past year, and a preview of plans ahead for the next year, and th this year. Following this address, there will be a picnic lunch in the Roosevelt Quad to which everybody is invited. Now, before I begin, I would like to take a moment of silence to honor, in honor of the Farmingdale High School students and adults recovering from the bus accident last week, and in memory of the two people who tragically lost their lives, one of whom, Gina Pelletieri, was a double alum alumna of Hofstra University and was admired widely on this campus. So let's just take a moment. Thank you. I want to begin this afternoon by welcoming the 38 new full-time faculty who have joined the Hofstra community over the past year. 29 are tenure system professors and nine are specials or visiting professors. I am happy to report that 32% of this year's new tenure system faculty hires are faculty of color. To these new faculty, I say that you are now agents of Hofstra's future, and we are so happy that you chose to join us and this exciting academic community. Let's together welcome all of these new faculty to Hofstra. We added two new members of the cabinet last February, Terry Coniglio, Vice President for Marketing and Communication, and Shonda Washington, Associate to the President for Government and Community Affairs. I want to thank Melissa Connolly for her long and dedicated service to Hofstra, most recently as the Vice President for University Relations. We also have a wonderful new group of deans. On June 1st, Dr. Renee McLeod Sorgen became the Dean of the School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies. On July 1st, we welcomed the new Dean of the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, Eva Badowski. On August 1st, we welcome the new Dean of the School of Health Professions and Human Services, Dr. Reginald Alston. And we are delighted that Vice Dean Julian Koo has stepped up to serve as the Interim Dean of the Maurice A. Dean School of Law this year. Between the cabinet and the deans, this is the most diverse academic leadership in Hofstra's history. I want to acknowledge with gratitude the service of the founding dean of the Hofstra Northwell School of Nursing, Dr. Kathy Gallo, and the former dean of the Maurice A. Dean School of Law, Gail Prudenti, for their distinguished service to Hofstra. And Dr. Dan Siebold, professor and chair of mathematics, for doing an excellent job as interim dean of the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences for more than two years. The provost's office currently has two dean searches in process, one for the School of Law and the other for a new dean of the university libraries. Please join me in congratulating and thanking interim associate dean Sally Glasser, who stepped, stepped up to lead the library this year. As of this month, the library through Sally Glasser reports to the provost's office rather than to the dean of H class. And when we hire a dean of libraries, that person will also report directly to the provost. This past year, we also welcomed a new member to the Hofstra Board of Trustees, Mr. Craig Dempster. Mr. Dempster is a 1994 alumnus who recently retired as global CEO of Merkel and has been a committed advocate to Hofstra as a donor, a mentor, and a teacher. Mr. Dempster is the fourth new member of the Board of Trustees over the past two years. Last year, the theme of the state of the university was investment. I spoke about many of the investments that we were making to programs and people, investments that continue today. This year, the theme is strategy. That is, developing a strategy or strategies to carry out our ambitions over the coming years. 
And these include strategies around enrollment, around diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, around faculty hiring and academic program development, research, community engagement, and reputation. Strategic also refers to strategic planning, which we are moving forward with this year, and I'll come back to that shortly. But first, I would like to highlight some of your accomplishments over the past year so as to provide some shared understanding of the current state of our beloved university. On the enrollment front, the overall undergraduate enrollment remains robust, though slightly under target for new first year students. Continuing students at the undergraduate and the graduate levels exceeded targets and international students have increased. We will have final numbers at census next week. Significantly, we maintained the 83% retention rate from last year, which was the highest ever for Hofstra. That is the blue line on this slide. One thing to note about this slide of great importance, you see that graduation rates in green and orange, one is six year, one is four year graduation rates, closely follow first year retention rates. They go up and down together. And this is why first year retention rates are so important. They predict graduation rates. The incoming first year undergraduate class stands at approximately 1,600. 56% of new students self-identify as students of color, a new high for Hofstra. 56% are women. 33% are first generation college going, another high for Hofstra. And 3% are international. It's good to see more international students coming back to, camp to our campus. This slide is a reminder of the upcoming enrollment cliff. The fact that the country will soon enter a period of decreasing numbers of high school graduates, hence increasing competition among colleges for students. This is one key reality that must drive our strategy going forward. So this is a good moment to pause and talk about last spring's affirmative action decision by the US Supreme Court. That decision held that going forward, it is unconstitutional and illegal to use race as a factor in admitting students to college. This will have no effect on the undergraduate admissions process at Hofstra, which did not use race and does not use race as a factor in deciding whom to admit. The broader significance of the decision is the assumptions that it made and its overall message, which reflects an almost entirely ahistorical view of this country and a refusal to come to terms with or be honest about the current state of equality of opportunity in our society. For Hofstra's purposes as a university educating the next generation, it's important to understand what this case did not say. And therefore, the strategies that we can and will continue to use in our ongoing pursuit of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. So let me be clear. We will continue to inc increase efforts to recruit and retain talented students from underserved communities and partner with their school districts to support access and assist with preparedness for college. We will continue to support clubs, activities, and affinity groups of all kinds on campus, so long as these activities are open to all students. We will acknowledge that race can impact experiences, disparities, and opportunity in our society. We will continue to discuss and value diverse racial, cultural, religious, physical, and gender identities in our campus community. We will continue to push back against racism, bias, and discrimination. And we will continue efforts to build diversity among the Hofstra faculty, students, staff, and administrators. Now I will spend a few minutes reviewing some of the highlights of the past academic year, starting with just some of the accomplishments of our faculty and students. This past year, the distinguished faculty lectures were given in the fall 
by Professor Javier Izquierdo on developing microbial solutions to complex problems, one microbe at a time. And in the spring, by Professors Gina Pontrelli and Christine Zamet on gamification and simulation in physician assisted, assistant education. Provost Reardon instituted a new annual faculty award for outstanding research, which went to Professor Simon Doubleday from history and to Professor Nick Myrna from engineering. Many faculty received external recognition for their research and pedagogy last year, including Hofstra adjunct professor of music, Donald Vega, was awarded the prestigious John Simon Guggenheim Fellowship to complete a collection of original compositions chronicling his life as a Nicaraguan immigrant. Dr. Rebecca Natow, assistant professor of educational leadership and policy, placed first in the category of politics for the 2022 Royal Dag Dragonfly Book Awards for her recent book, Reexamining the Federal Role in Higher Education. The book also won a Critics' Choice Book Award from the American Educational Studies Association. Hofstra Math Professor Behelu Mamo won the 2023 Distinguished Teaching Award from the Metropolitan New York Section of the Mathematical Association of America. Hofstra Law Professor Ellen Yaroshevsky received the 2022 American Bar Association Criminal Justice Section Charles R. English Award given annually to lawyers and judges who've distinguished themselves by their work in the field of criminal justice. The North American Academy of the Spanish Language has awarded Miguel Angel Zapata, Professor of Romance Languages and Literatures, the 2023 Enrique Anderson Imbert National Award. Professor of Global Studies and Geography, John Paul Rodriguez, was formally inducted as a Hagler Fellow at Texas A&M University the Institute chooses fellows from among the world's top scientists, engineers, and scholars. The Pi Kappa Delta National Forensics Association honored Tomika Robinson, Senior Associate Dean of the Honors College and Professor of Rhetoric and Public Advocacy, with the L. E. Norton Award for Outstanding Scholarly Contributions to the Discipline of Intercollegiate Forensics. Larry Levy, Executive Dean of Hofstra's National Center for Suburban Studies, was inducted into the Long Island Journalism Hall of Fame and was recognized as Educator of the Year by the Long Island Black Educators Association. Dr. Betty Diamond, Director of Hofstra's MD-PhD program and professor at the Zucker School of Medicine at Hofstra Northwell, was inducted into the National Academy of Sciences and was awarded the American College of Rheumatology Gold Medal and the Women's Leadership Award from the Association of American Medical Colleges. Alice Fornari, Associate Dean for Educational Skills Development at the Zucker School, is the recipient of the 2023 Northeast Group on Education Affairs Innovation in Medical Education Award, which recognizes excellence along the continuum of medical education from medical school through continuing professional development. Dr. Jennifer Mears, Associate Dean for Faculty Affairs at the Zucker School, was named the American Heart Association's Physician of the Year and Tochi Iroku Maliz, founding chair and professor of family medicine for the Zucker School of Medicine, assumed the role of president of the American Academy of Family Physicians. And finally, David Batnelli, the dean of the Zucker School of Medicine at Hofstra Northwell, was named to Becker's Healthcare 2023 Top Physician Leaders to Know. Now on to some student recognition. Master of Health Administration student Rebecca Wade won first place in the American College of Healthcare Executives Richard J. Stull Student Essay Competition in Healthcare Management for her article, Climate Change and Healthcare, Creating a Sustainable and Climate Resilient Health Delivery System. On the nationally broadcast The View program from ABC News, Herbert School of Communication graduate journalism student Fatima Moyen told her inspiring story as an immigrant and an aspiring journalist and was awarded the inaugural Barbara Walter Scholarship from ABC News and the Alliance for Women in Media. She, along with other Herbert School communication students, Rowan Laddick, Rachel Lusher, and Gabriella Marinelli, also won Gracie Awards, recognizing work by, for, or about women in television, radio, and online media. 
In H class, Esha Sharma, a senior in the BSMD program, won a Dana-Farber Harvard Cancer Center Award at the New England Science Symposium at Harvard Medical School for a presentation of her research on leukemia. Antonio Collado, a biochemistry major, was honored as a Goldwater Scholar and was recipient of a summer undergraduate research fellowship from Rockefeller University. This past June, drama majors Tori Bogakik, Bogaki, sorry, Kim Bramwell, Deante Ferguson, Jack Goodman, and Ariana Wentworth performed a one-act play written by Wentworth at the European Young Theatre Festival in Spoleto, Italy. They were the only American college students to participate in this year's prestigious international showcase. And Maxwell Clegg, a 2023 Honors College graduate, was awarded a research assistantship from the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. He will be examine, examining issues shaping Africa's future. For the second consecutive year, the team from the Zarb School of Business Berliner Broadlieb Family Student Managed Investment Fund, known as SMIF, won first place out of 100 schools in the firm performance analysis competition at the ninth annual SMIF competition. The Zarb team included finance majors Michael Candela, Christopher Mero, and Ai Chan Sint, and was led by Professor Edward Zikovich. The Student Government Association, under the leadership of Will Germain and Julie Singh, was very active last year. The SGA used its reserves to renovate the Interfaith Center, the Commuter Lounge, and the Back Lounge of Bits and Bites, and they successfully advocated to add free feminine hygiene product, products in the student center restrooms. The SGA partnered with several campus departments to enhance the At Hofstra identity-based program series by adding new topics to the annual programming. Let's now look at some of what happened in the colleges and schools, or I should say some what else happened in the colleges and schools, starting with the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Last April, the Calico Center for the Study of the Presidency sponsored a wildly successful presidential conference entitled the Obama Presidency Hope and Change, organized by its executive dean, Mina Bowes, and by the director of the Cultural Center, Atheline Collins. Scholars, journalists, and former Obama officials explored the administration, policymaking, and the legacy of President Barack Obama. Billboard magazine recognized Hofstra University's music business program in its 2022 roundup of best music business schools in the US. This is the fourth time since 2016 that music business at Hofstra has been recognized by Billboard's roundup of top programs. The Zarb School of Business launched the High Tech Core Skills Lab that uses artificial intelligence and virtual reality to enhance students' critical thinking and communication skills. Zarb opened an entirely student-run store that sells Zarb-branded clothing and other items. This initiative provides students with a soup-to-nuts experience in creating a retail store, invaluable experience for preparing them for careers in business. Finally, the Zarb Online MBA earned its highest ranking since its inception, number 19 in US News and number 18 in Fortune Magazine. The DeMattis School of Engineering and Applied Science partnered with Cornell University's Breakthrough Tech AI program to host a summer program in machine learning focused on women, non-binary, and underrepresented college students. This is a pipeline project to diversify the AI industry. This was the first satellite program offered by Breakthrough AI and will become a model for other such programs around the country. Through the DeMatta School, Hofstra is also part of New York's effort to become a leader in the manufacture of semiconductors, partnering with other universities and Micron Technology. Faculty in the School of Engineering were recently awarded a $1 million National Science Foundation Major Research Instrumentation Award to support Hofstra acquiring a high-performance computing cluster for artificial intelligence, machine learning, scientific computing, and interdisciplinary research. The principal investigator is Professor Eddie Curry. 
the HPC cluster will be housed in the new Science and Innovation Center. The Lawrence Herbert School of Communication launched a new Bachelor of Science in Sports Media program, the first time the school's two departments have offered a joint degree. And one year after ABC7 established its Long Island Bureau at the Herbert School, that partnership is expanding, including new internships at ABC in Manhattan. The film program at the Herbert School continues to be ranked by Variety Magazine among the top 30 film schools in the country. And this year, the film school cracked the top 25 ranking on the Holiday Hollywood Reporters list. Finally, the Herbert School received the National Edward R. Murrow Award from the Radio Television Digital News Association for its 2022 Hofstra Votes Live midterm election coverage. Last year, Health Professions and Human Services hosted several large-scale events, including a gun violence prevention summit in February in partnership with Hofstra's Law School. And the 10th Annual National Public Health Week Conference held in April 2023, with 17 cross-disciplinary events and over 300 attendees. One highlight from this conference was the inaugural Brett Lake Speaker Series current trends in mental health event, sponsored by Hofstra trustee, Dr. Diana Lake. Over this past summer, the School of Nursing received accreditation from the Commission on Collegiate Nursing Education, making it now a fully accredited school of nursing. The Nursing and uh, Ph Physician Assistant school, Studies School was the recipient of one of the largest and most transformational gifts ever to Hofstra five and a quarter million dollars from the Sirota Foundation for scholarships to students in the Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies program. The Rabinowitz Honors College piloted a large-scale interdisciplinary project-based learning course called Climate Change Challenges. Students worked in collaborative groups to identify and research ideas to develop and present specific proposals to address climate change. The Honors College also launched a new engagement certificate program, awarding students a certificate recognizing the ways their experiences in college go beyond what appears on the transcript, and thus contributing to their professional portfolio. Over at the Maurice A. Dean School of Law, Hofstra Law Family Court Review, edited by Hofstra Law faculty and students, ranks first nationally in the category Family and Juvenile Law by Washington and Lee School of Law. Hofstra Law also received an A rating from Pre-Law Magazine for its trial advocacy offerings, and a team from Hofstra Law won the regional championship of the American Bar Association's 2023 moot court competition. The Zucker School of Medicine graduated its ninth class of 100 students with their MD and MD-PhD degrees and matched 100% of those graduates into 20 different specialties. The Zucker School consistently places its graduates into the top 30 academic graduate training programs in the country. The School of Medicine was one of 21 medical schools around the country that received the 2022 Health Professions Higher Education Excellence in Diversity, known as the HEED Award, from Insight into Diversity magazine. And Hofstra's WRHU radio program, Well Said, a public service program co-produced by the Zucker School of Medicine and the Herbert School of Communication, and hosted by Dr. Ira Nash, Associate Dean for Leadership Development at the Medical School, received a Press Club of Long Island Media Award for its episode on family planning and women's health, clinical implications of Dobbs v. Jackson. The Center for Civic Engagement was recognized by Long Island Jobs with Jobs with Justice as one of the few places where labor, community, and worker struggles are centered and uplifted for public ed education. CCE undergraduate fellows performed 1,390 hours of engaged service with social justice-oriented community partners focused on issues such as protecting immigrant and worker rights, food security, and housing security. The National Center for Suburban Studies received $800,000 from J.P. Morgan Chase to train diverse entrepreneurs to join the supply chains of bigger companies. 
Suburban Studies became one of the primary partners in a $4 million state-funded program to create green, a green energy hub on Long Island. This program, which is being led by Cornell University Cooperative Extension, seeks to ensure that Long Islanders realize the benefits of the green energy revolution. And Suburban Studies received a third two-year grant of $200,000 from the Long Island Regional Planning Council to work with the town of Hempstead to conduct water quality testing in the Western Bays and analyze 60 years of collected data. This initiative is part of the state's nitrogen abatement plan. At the Saltzman Center, staff and students provided over 800 sessions per month across the training programs in nine academic disciplines, including literacy studies, speech and hearing, counseling, marriage and family therapy, as well as clinical psychology. Through collaborations with the Hofstra University Chemistry Department and the student members of the American Chemical Society, the children in the Diane Lindner Goldberg Child Care Institute enjoyed exciting and interactive science experiments. Athletics, under the leadership of Vice President and AD Rick Cole, continues to model the values of the scholar-athlete, this year achieving a 3.44 cumulative GPA across the teams. And they also had a great year athletically, with both men's and women's soccer winning back-to-back -back CAA conference championships, and softball winning its CAA conference championship. All three teams went on to the NCAA tournament. Men's basketball won the this, this CAA conference regular season and then proceeded to take out top-seeded Rutgers in the NIT on national television. That was fun. Um, and Coach Speedy Claxton was the CAA Conference Coach of the Year. With the help of significant donor and grant support, we replaced the soccer and field hockey fields and have a brand new scoreboard for soccer, which serve our teams as well as our surrounding community. Finally, the athletes and the athletic staff had a record-breaking year in terms of their service hours, with over 3,700 total hours mostly in service to our local community. The administrative offices that serve the whole campus were also busy this year. The Office of Equity and Inclusion, through its chief DEI officer, Cornell Craig, and his staff, continue to innovate to ensure equity and inclusion at Hofstra. Among this year's highlights were the creation of an additional five school-based DEI committees, so that there is now a DEI committee in every school at Hofstra and in H-Class. A representative from each of these schools will come together this semester to form the University-Wide Equity Council. This year, the Equity and Inclusion Office innovated with faculty professional development micro-grants for faculty to work on diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging projects. The office has awarded 10 $500 grants, which are being used for research projects, conference attendance, and cultural immersion experiences with undergraduate and graduate students. Information technology services under the leadership of CIO Jesse Webster, and working with the offices of the provost, student enrollment engagement and success, human resources, and financial affairs, led the technical integration and deployment of the largest ever number of new technologies in a single year at Hofstra, with new investments to digitize paper-based processes and the wholesale replacement of existing but outdated systems. Highlights of this initiative include, in partnership with Provost Charlie Reardon and under the leadership of EdTech Director Mitch Case, Canvas was, has now replaced the former learning management system of Blackboard Learn, as I'm sure you all know. In partnership with Vice President Jess Eads and her team, Atrium will enable a new mobile device-based ID for students with meal plans. In partnership with Vice President for Human Relations, Denise Cunningham and her team, People Admin introduced an applicant tracking system to streamline hiring processes. This is key to our ability to understand and improve hiring practices, as well as track the demographics of current faculty, administrators, and staff, 
and those who apply to Hofstra. In partnership with Vice President for Finance, Kathy Hennessy, and her team, Chrome River was implemented. This system digitized the travel and expense reimbursement process. The finance website is also being revised so that information about travel reimbursements and other topics that directly affect individuals on campus are easier to access and to follow. The university continues its upward trajectory in terms of fundraising and alumni development. Earlier this year, under the leadership of Alan Kelly, Vice President for Development and Alumni Relations, Hofstra received one of the biggest gifts in the university's history, as I have already mentioned, when the Stanley Sirota Charitable Foundation invested five and a quarter million dollars in student scholarships in the School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies. This gift was facilitated by the chairman of the Hofstra Board of Trustees, Don Schaefer. We held alumni and fundraising events around the country again this year, and we are in the early stages of a capital campaign and have recruited a blue ribbon committee of alumni and parents and friends to help guide us in the early stages of this ambitious fundraising effort. There was a transition to a new executive leadership committee for the Alumni Association. I want to thank Hillary Needle for her outstanding service as president of the Hofstra Alumni Association over the past three years, and welcome Heather Cohen as the new president. Under the direction of Vice President for Facilities and Planning, Joe Barkwell, who also gave us this beautiful day today. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I always request it, and I always get it. Um, construction on the new 75,000 square foot Science and Innovation Center is complete, and the building is now full of faculty and students. This is the largest classroom and office building on our campus and supports teaching and research in the Dematis School of Engineering and Applied Science and the Hofstra Northwell School of Nursing and Physician Assisted Studies. Its state-of-the-art design and equipment include multifunctional classrooms, advanced engineering and computer labs, a robotics room, a maker space, and a wind tunnel, as well as simulation, nurse, uh, simulation nursing training center with simulated patient exam rooms and operating rooms. The ribbon cutting for the building will be next week on Thursday, October 5th at 10 a.m. And you are all invited. You should be getting an email about this today or early tomorrow. This past summer, there were significant upgrades to the exterior of the Axon Library. These include long planned facade repair and painting. And next spring, we will replace existing single pane tower windows with new energy efficient windows. Once those are in, the ninth and 10th floors will become student study and lounge space. The next stage is to repurpose the fourth floor of the library for academic or possibly administrative offices. In preparation, the library faculty and staff will undertake a deaccessioning process that involves examination of the entire collection, as well as consultation with affected faculty in order to ensure that we do not eliminate or move off-site books that are or are likely to be in circulation or in demand. The fourth floor renovations in the library are part of a related long-term plan to repurpose Hofstra Hall so that faculty can have a central gathering space on campus. But this requires moving administrative offices out of Hofstra Hall. We will be providing more information and seeking input on these and other uh, campus planning plans uh, this year. Finally, we undertook a campus ADA accessibility and universal design review this year with an outside consultant on accessibility. Once we have that report, we will review the recommendations and determine implementation steps. And last year at this time, we had completed the annual presidential symposium on the topic of sustainability. This year, the symposium, which is on artificial intelli intelligence, is in its second of three days right now. So far, it has been wonderful. I've gone to many of the panels. They touched on issue, uh, issues of AI's impact on filmmakers and other artists, on the disabled, on the college admissions process, on K-12 teachers, just this morning on politics, and so forth. The symposium continues in the Goodhart Theater this afternoon 
and all day tomorrow, and I highly recommend it. So this is a quick tour of the state of the university. I could not possibly mention everything that happened or everyone who played a role in moving us forward last year, and I'm sure there were some people left out, and I apologize for that. I remain grateful to each and every one of you for all of your great work and, and for the spirit in which it is undertaken. I hope that this whirlwind recounting of the state of the university as we begin the new academic year communicated a focus on strategy. Whether it is repurposing parts of the library to better serve students, opening a state-of-the-art building to serve engineering and nursing students and do research, the provost's creation of a faculty award in research, diversifying our ranks, or adopting new systems to streamline processes, we are laser focused on finding out better ways to serve students, to support faculty in their creative endeavors, to raise money to bring down the cost of college, and to grow the university's reputation. As many of you will recall, in academic year 21-22, we embarked on what we called the Vision Project. The feedback from this project set the stage for creating a strategic plan by revealing the outcomes around which there is some consensus on campus, including these strengths and ambitions for the university. We've already adopted strategies around many of these. I've already talked about the diversity of the first year class and new faculty. This past year, Provost Reardon created the Council at Hofstra for Ensuring Student Success, known as CHESS, which involves more than 50 faculty, staff, and administrators. The Provost is working closely with Vice President Jess Eads and a steering committee to develop actionable recommendations to enhance retention and belonging. This has led to new initiatives, including the introduction of a peer advising program. The next step in framing strategic planning was to center the academic enterprise. It is by strengthening Hofstra's academic programs, it is that way that we will be able to achieve the goals of increasing research, strengthening and increasing external partnerships, increasing diversity, attracting philanthropy, including student financial aid and faculty support, and building the reputation of the faculty. So to center the academic mission, the provost and I undertook an experiment and launched, launched the Strategic Directions Request for Proposals, or the RFP program. Last January, a steering committee of faculty released the RFP, and we received 78 full proposals the majority of which were submitted by interdisciplinary teams of faculty, with a total of 250 faculty members participating overall. We were incredibly excited to receive so many proposals and of such high quality. This indicated to us a huge amount of pent-up creativity and ambition among the faculty. The steering committee reviewed the proposals, made recommendations, and we designated 10 to go forward. For many of the other proposals that were not funded, we suggested that the faculty who submitted them take them to their departments as the more appropriate place for review and possible implementation. And we are planning a second round RFP release soon. The faculty will recall that when we announced the funded proposals, we also shared themes that had emerged from the process. These themes reflected some of the themes that emerged from the vision project or they were closely related. The first theme coming out of the RFP process was interdisciplinary study and research. 49 of the 78 proposals, as I said, came from teams of faculty from more than one school, or across the three major divisions of arts and sciences. Innovating with and increasing interdisciplinary majors and academic initiatives at the undergraduate level may well be a strategy for Hofstra to differentiate itself academically while building on a strength that is already there. For example, I already mentioned the highly ranked music business program, a partnership of the Zarb School and the music department in H class. And the BS in sustainability studies is another example of an interdisciplinary major. One of the funded proposals from the RFP process is the combination of computer science with majors in the social sciences, a type of program that many universities offer known as CS plus programs. 
We also funded a collaboration by H-Class, the Honors College, and the Feinstein Institute to create a cancer education program. We also funded a program to encourage students to work at the intersection of art, design, and technology, which will combine H-Class departments and engineering. We hope and expect that these new programs will appeal to students' interests and their talents and their career aspirations, but we could do so much more. Another theme that emerged from the RFP process was community outreach tied to academic programs and service learning. One of the funded faculty proposals is a dual credit program with a local high school to help recruit students to the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication, beginning when they are juniors in high school. This type of activity is within Hofstra's already well-established tradition, as indicated by the examples cited earlier, of how we use and build our expertise through community outreach. The third theme to emerge from the RFPs was creating a common academic experience for first-year students. Now, we specifically requested proposals in this area because a small first-year experience is a well-established way to help students navigate their first year and then persist in college. And this goes directly to creating more belonging on campus, one of the ambitions of the Vision Project by ensuring that all first-year students have an early experience with a small cohort of students led by a faculty member or an administrator who knows them well and can serve as a resource throughout their time at Hofstra. The groups of faculty and administrators who made proposals about a first-year academic experience are already meeting and working on a recommendation. Finally, the fourth theme arising out of the RFP process relates to creating an administrative structure that facilitates innovation. This theme crosses many areas of the university. One area is simplifying administrative processes, and we are well into this as demonstrated by the many systems that we have recently adopted, including the aforementioned Chrome River and People Admin. We also need to adapt our processes to support our academic ambitions. For example, doing interdisciplinary work at a university is not a novel idea. Yet this kind of work is often subtly discouraged by existing academic rules and structures, whether they be about the calculation of credit hour load or departmental requirements for tenure and promotion. As a medium-sized private university, we have a lot of control over those structures, and we could adopt new rules that encourage interdisciplinary work, allowing us not only to teach from multiple perspectives, but also to model how teams of people with different perspectives often create more insightful and enduring results. In this way, interdisciplinarity reinforces the necessity of improving diversity at all levels of the university another ambition that is revealed through the Vision Project. Now, I am not suggesting that our entire curriculum should be interdisciplinary. First of all, the faculty control the curriculum, so it doesn't really matter what I say, in a way. And having expertise in a discipline is critical, whether that's in English literature, in the basics of coding, or in the rules of accounting. But when we asked the question over the past two years, what should our ambitions be, interdisciplinary programs were mentioned repeatedly. Reviewing our academic and administrative processes does not relate just to the interdisciplinary curriculum. One of the proposals from the RFP process was to restart the conversation about how to deliver the curriculum most effectively and efficiently, including the possibility of a four-credit, four-course curriculum model or other global solution. Now, that discussion leads logically into a discussion of the class schedule. Reconsidering course loads and the class schedule could help eliminate barriers to persistence and graduation for students. It could address the faculty dilemma that pits course load requirements against the ability to have time for research and scholarship. It could increase classroom utilization on the campus. And it could relieve some parking issues. Finally. Permeating all of these themes is the overall ambition, as articulated in the Vision Project results, of increasing diversity, inclusion, and belonging on campus. I've already spoken about the primacy of this goal. 
And in response to several proposals from the RFP process, we are therefore supporting a cluster hire initiative in the natural sciences, which ties into a broader effort to build faculty candidate pools across the university's departments that are broadly diverse and inclusive. Just as they permeate so many aspects of campus life, diversity and equity must permeate all aspects of strategic planning. So I've gone through a long description of how we have created strategies for improvement over the past year, and now find ourselves on the precipice of strategic planning for the university. Let me outline how we are now envisioning this process moving forward. Last summer, the cabinet met to study the outcomes of the vision project and the RFP process and drafted a new mission statement for the university. This was a first, and this was and is a first draft, a way of getting something written down that could be reviewed and revised by the campus community. This draft was subsequently reviewed by all of the deans and some revisions were made in response to their feedback. The next step, which got underway last week, was to gather together a representative group of faculty to do a further review of the draft mission statement and to propose a set of core values for the university. This faculty group, many of whom were part of the RFP steering committee that reviewed the faculty proposals and to which we added the current president of the Student Government Association, Lincoln Anabali, will make recommendations in mid-November. The final stage to this multi-year planning process will occur in the spring 2024 semester. Four committees comprised of faculty, administrators, staff, and students, which have not yet been set up, will be formed to consider how to advance the university in four strategic areas. And we have designated the committee topics as the following. Interdisciplinary and new academic programs that will distinguish Hofstra and drive enrollment. Remember that cliff? Community engagement that intersects with academic program and research and strengthens our community ties and our centrality to Long Island. A culture of student success that facilitates increased retention and graduation rates through innovative programs and student engagement that foster belonging and resilience. And what we're calling organizational agility. The creation of an adaptable and agile administrative structure in order to leverage the size of Hofstra, the incredible scope of its programs, and to support innovation. Each of these committees will recommend a set of measurable goals and implementation steps that will guide university efforts over the next five plus years. The hope is to have a new university strategic plan by the time May commencement rolls around. Now, I hope that you can see how all of these things connect. The vision project, the RFP themes, and the strategic planning committees. But in case you don't, maybe this will help. To thank uh, Vice President uh, Terry Coniglio for all of those arrows. <laughs> Now, we all know uh, the old adage, uh, humans plan and God laughs. Um, so we must understand that all of the strategic thinking might not go exactly as planned. And we may need to revise along the way. However, as this slide hopefully demonstrates, we have gotten to this point by seeking information from the whole community through the vision project and the RFP process in order to get specific direction about strategic planning. This brings us to a moment when we must, as a community, use all this information to create Hofstra's future. So now, lunch awaits in the Roosevelt Quad, and thank you for coming.